profiled on Rocket Dreamers is Darth. And from my conversation with him, he's a perfect fit for the Orlando Pirates ethos. We talk about his journey in Rocket League and his ambitions and how much he's looking forward to Worlds. Darth Dazel. So I, I, I will tell you where I remember you from. I, I started getting involved with Rocket League and streaming on YouTube almost three years ago in June 2019. And shortly after that, you used to arrive in my chat. And and I think then I, you... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, I used to be in those in those streams yes. at that time. Yeah. And I think even then you were you were better than me because you would you would give the occasional bit of advice, um, which was which was desperately needed, no doubt. So that does mean you've been involved for at least three years. So let's start with that. The rock. How did Rocket League all begin for you? Um, it probably began in 2017. I think around April, probably. I okay. I first got the game. I think on Xbox. Uh, after which I switched to PlayStation for probably a year or two, and then I switched to PC. So I've been on on all the platforms basically. <laughs> when, uh, and when was the switch to PC? Oh, um, I think that was probably 2018, end okay. 2018. Okay, so you've so, been yeah. you, you've been solid PC for some time. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have been. And at what point did you decide you wanted a you might want to venture out and do this competitively? Uh, I mean, I've always, you know, known I've, I've been pretty decent at the game. So if I'm at the top already or near the top, I might as well, you know, take that yeah. opportunity and, and grind. Okay. And, 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 and what have you done competitively? What have I done? I mean, I mean, who have you I played, played who have you played for and what have you, yeah. So, I mean, we, we all, we all know you now. But uh, mm -hmm. what what I'm looking at what led up to your arrival on Orlando Pirates? What what came before that? Gosh, some some trivia now from <laughs> from my history. Um, I started as very early, probably as soon as I joined PC. I I played on some really random teams. Okay. Uh, with I think Arceon and oh, yeah. Olympic at first, and then I moved on to. LB and it's it's me monster and you know Jeez. those kind of teams and I just mm. built through through all of them uh, to probably my I mean my first real team which was uh, Eugen and Amberger. Uh that's where wow. I I think I got spotted okay. by the Orlando Pirates guys okay. when I was beating uh, IVE with that lineup and Venom of course was also on that team. I'm trying to remember, did you play the LAN in 2019 or were you there? No, no, I okay. wasn't there. I watched I watched the stream a bit in 2019, but okay. I wasn't there now. This LAN was my first one. Sure, amazing. Okay, and all right, well, let's, let's, let's cover a few basics first. So, so where are you based? I am in Langebon, all the way in the West Coast. Langebon. Now, that's, mm -hmm. uh, how far from Cape Town is that? That's probably an hour and okay. ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. And are born born and raised in Langebon. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. And and how old are you now? I am nineteen. And now. okay. And you're done with school, right? School's done. Finished last year. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And 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 so, what occupies your time outside of Rocket League? Um, at the moment, I pretty much decided that I'm gonna I'm gonna try Rocket League this year because I'm. You know, probably going to go to the worlds, so yeah. I don't really want to mess with my with my studies mm -hmm. for that. So next year I'm studying. Okay. Uh, but this year I'm I'm doing some things in between. I mean, I say I take this year for Rocket League, but I really don't play that much Rocket League. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna come to that. We'll come to to. Mm. So it's a so it's a bit of a for all intents and purposes a a, a Rocket League gap year. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um. All right, and Darth, give us the give us the uh, the origin story for the name. Ah, uh, there's no origin story really. I mean, I like the name. <laughs> I liked I liked Star Wars when I was young. So fair enough. Darth was cool. Darth Vader was cool. I I took it, put my surname. Cool. You know, yes. I was initially Darth Dazel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
when I joined PC first and on PS4, but... I do think that's epic, by the way. Darth Darth Dazel does sound very... uh, it was a bit too long for my liking. No, I no, I, and I, and I, I probably agree with you there. And it's hard to say when you're when you're casting and all of that yeah, sort of thing. But oh but my. it is an epic name. Mm, yeah, <laughs> a bit more personalized than just Darth. I ran into quite a few Darths on EU. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay, all right. So let's talk about how you landed up on Orlando Pirates. When did that happen? How did that happen? Okay, so probably in lockdown 2020, I was approached by one of the Orlando Pirates members. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think it matters who, but Lowe <laughs> approached me. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, when he was on the team for a short period. Uh, and by the orders of, of Snowy and CPZ, I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I just was pretty much approached for to play on the team. And I mean, at that point, it was a really a tough time in the scene. I mean, no tournaments. The, the only thing we had was like 300 rand medal states oh. and so it's kind of like, so. join, join this team to do what? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, I'm at the top, but you know, I'm not really winning mm-hmm. anything. Yes. It was for the hope of IWO okay. that, I, that I joined. That was April last year, right? Okay, so that was obviously in the lead up it to It was that. Probably, probably more like to June, June 2020. But yeah, the... Oh, the uh, whole thing got IWO. postponed. That's right. Okay, I remember that because it was supposed IWO to be 2020. Right, and, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then around June okay. 2021. Okay, so, and then did you do, and was that because, because I know Lowe was planning to leave, was that, were you sort of, were they looking at you to then fill Mr. Lowe's slot? It's actually a really complicated story about who I was. I mean, (laughs) there was, because we got Shadow as well, and then, you know, we have like, we didn't really have a set roster. It was basically just me and Gareth, or me and, and Snowy with like, different players we had shadow we had low we had nick uh, yes we have skill now it's just pretty much i was i was there to replace i think cpz because obviously he left uh but you know him and nick him and uh, low switched yeah, off sometimes so. okay okay fine yeah. so it was just it was filling out the roster until until there was was a settled roster for it okay yeah. um okay so you guys have done very well, winning winning five out of the six regionals. Um, yeah. And so, so what is the? I mean, you've mentioned you're probably going to Worlds. So, so, so tell me the the big plan for Rocket League. I mean, this year it seems fairly clear what you want to do, but are there plans beyond? What is your thinking when it comes to professional Rocket League? Uh, probably just see how far I can take it. I mean. It's really difficult because I know we're quite a wide, like quite a, a wide skill gap away from the real professional Rocket League players. So yeah. it's it's difficult. Like I'm realistic about it. Yes. Uh, and we just don't have the the resources and and player base here to like do anything about it. So mm. so yeah, I'm realistic. I'll see where it can go. Uh, and, I'll and, I'll take it as far as I can. And what and what does that mean? As far as you can, meaning what? Once it's not viable for my time anymore, I mean, at the moment, I, I still get some enjoyment out of Rocket League. I mean, some enjoyment out of Rocket League. Uh, and, you know, the tournaments are fun. They're good. They're coming thick and fast. And once once that, you know, stops maybe or, or something, I'll probably... And how long do you think it'll be until that happens? It probably depends on how well world go, Worlds goes and mm-hmm. how... Um, our Sonics responds to to us next season. Like we don't know what's gonna happen next season. Mm. It's looking positive, but you know, it's it all depends on Sionics basically what they wanna support the region with. All right. Well, I think what... it's probably a few years. Okay. Well, let's let's talk about that for a moment because there are there are positive the 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 undertones seem to be very positive for the future of the region, um, as far as RLCS goes. So what would what would have to happen? in the next season for you to go, okay, yeah, I'm going to stick with this for at least another season. What's, what's the ideal outcome at the end of, end of this season and Worlds? The ideal outcome is uh, major spots. I mean, that's fairly simple. Just major spots okay. like APEC. Okay, fine. So, the, I mean, there is talk in, 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 in order to make room for a... Because there is some talk about... Because if they open up a spot for us, there's also the argument about... APAC is north and south. Should it be? Should they be combined? Should they have two slots? Should so? Uh, I'm should... happy to play APAC for this one. 
Okay. I, I mean, as long as we get a chance. Like, at the moment, we don't even get yes. a chance. Well, I do... Th okay, well, I mean, if if they do open up, they would probably have to open to 20... Have 20 slots at the majors rather than 16. Mm -hmm. And then that yeah. becomes viable. All right, so end of Worlds. You guys acquit yourself relatively well. You do okay in the... Uh, in the uh, wild card event, um, maybe I, I don't know. Uh, okay, well, you do well enough that you go. This was a good result for us, and then and then yeah. they announce for the twenty two twenty three season. Great, so SSA is going to have a spot at the majors. Are you then committing for that season? Uh, I would commit for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, that would be that would be epic. I don't know what's going to do to my budget because I'd want to go to all those majors. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure you just have to join the admin team. They get yeah, a... I, I, yeah, or, or, or get Sinex to sponsor me as the or mm. something. I don't know. The, as a cost, it, yeah. It's a good problem to solve, and we'll we'll mm. we'll solve that as it happens. Um, okay, so all right, so that's a it's a it's a relatively clear path. So what happens if at the end of Worlds they pretty much go? We're going to have exactly the same format for next season. Um. I mean, I'm not just going to stop playing the game or anything, but I'll probably, I'll probably just not have it as my main focus uh, for right now. I'll, okay. I'll still play, but I'm not gonna. You know. Okay, not gonna. You're not gonna burn the house down to get it done. No. All right. And what about a? So I was, I had a, I had a chat with with Greg in a couple yeah. of weeks ago, mm. and we were talking about the gap that you've mentioned like... between. SSA and, and the rest of the, the world um, and, and, and one of the things he says would be very very important he feels is oh, it's not in it's not in love is that mm. something your org is likely to be interested in doing getting you guys over to EU for four five six weeks to, to boot camp and, and, and scrim against some of the best in the world uh, yeah I mean that's one of the main things we were looking for when we were looking for an org we were looking for support mainly I mean it's not really just about the the salary or the of course or the cuts or whatever it's it's mainly just the support for boot camping because that is you know it's one of the best parts and it's one of the most important parts for so us to be able to compete so have there been conversations about that we have we have talked about it at and, the start especially and and is there interest from the org um it uh, it looks like we can probably start looking at that but you know i can't say anything really about that all it's right. not my decision to make it then. So no, of course. But even, not... even if we have, even if we have no support, I mean, we'll still try our best to to get a boot camp because that's what something we really want to do. So okay, it's yeah, also I've... a bit difficult with the timing of worlds. Like, there's not a big gap between worlds and uh, and the last regional, and and stuff like that. No, no. I mean, the, I, I I do think the boot camping is probably going to have to be next season once that gets underway and there's some clarity mm -hmm. on what next season looks like. I mean, we were we were pretty much thrust into this. Uh, there was no preparation leading up yeah. to that. The first the first split, it was what was it like four weeks or something, and and mm. we were playing competitive. So there's been no time really to organize. This has been the longest gap we've had since September last year um, yeah. to even think. So I do think it's kind of scramble through this first season, see what see what Sarnex decides for for the future of SSA, and then plan out accordingly. But I'm glad to hear there's at least conversations with the org because uh, mm. that's something I'd like to be involved in and help with as much as I can. Because wow. we can get you know our, our, our top two, three, four teams over there. That's what really starts to close the gap, and as it's just that becomes a whole different level of excitement for the game and and obviously does, for the players. Yeah. So. So, Darth, have you have you been out of the country yet? Have you lived abroad or travelled abroad? No, I've not not been out of the country now. So, are you, are you excited for? I mean, outside of the Rocket League, are you excited like, excited to travel to? the No, I'm excited to go there. Yes, yeah. the Rocket League's pretty cool as well, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, so let's talk. You said you're not playing that much Rocket League. Tell us about the. The, the Orlando Pirates preparation. There's still seven really long weeks to go before the next split. So mm. have you guys, have you had conversations about preparing for it? Are you doing anything? What is the plan from here leading up to the 5th of May, the start of split three? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously now a little vacation. So all of us uh, are probably going to take off some time at some point. But we're still playing. And, you know, we, after the last split ended, I mean, it didn't go, it didn't go that great because we lost the regional, and we're not too happy about that. 
And with this, we still didn't play well when we win. So we're trying to really rectify that and and just put in the hours. Uh, so we're definitely gonna grind still, and we are you know grinding mostly now. So we just wanna we wanna be the best mm. still because we weren't last split. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's yeah. Well, well, I'm me... definitely not the, the biggest grinder on the team. Though, I have to say that. Skill still and, and Gareth definitely. Okay. So so what does that grind. so 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 what does the grind look like for you? What do you actually do, and how long are you spending on? I mean, it's probably not the greatest strats for me, but I I only grind with my team. I only play ranked with my team. I only play scrims okay. when we're all on. I have like no interest in solo queuing or or anything like that. I maybe sometimes play free play, but I really don't have an interest in in, a, in solo queuing or anything like that. Fair enough. All right, I just so, grind when we're all on. So let me ask you this: what what makes pirates? uh better than the other teams do is it uh, why why are you why are other teams struggling to beat you i mean <clears throat> for one we are just you know a bit more mechanically sound and like not that other teams aren't mechanically good but something in mechanics also takes a bit of brain and we have that a lot like Snowy is like one of the smartest players, really. Uh, mm -hmm. And Skill Still, he's also he's also very good at that, and he's such a grinder that he just picks up stuff. Okay. Uh, so we all just have a good blend of like being able to use our brains in situations, but also our mechanics, uh, which I think. And we also have a very good coach. Like, like CPZ is a very good coach for us. He he really puts in the time uh, when we need it. So yeah, okay. he gives a lot of advice. All right, and so you said that you you want to you want to get better and improve. You didn't feel that you were at your best in the last split. So, mm -hmm. what what is going to make you better? What what are you going to be working on together to improve to take you up an extra notch or two? Yeah, it's it's very much about our team play and just a bit of our general mechanics, but but a lot of our team play that wasn't good enough. So we're gonna we're gonna focus on on reviewing and uh, and playing as a team and and getting rotations and stuff done like that because it just wasn't good enough okay fair enough and 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 how interested are your parents in your progress how involved are they and and there's a bit of a bit of context to me asking that because when uh during i don't know if it was the first or second regional where uh twitch twitch banned the stream so and, and it was right during a, an orlando pirates game um, I had, I had frantic messages from two people. One was Gareth's dad, and the other one was your dad, who was like, "What's going on? You know, once once Darth goes into the room, we don't see him until the end of the tournament, so we can't ask him what's going on." Please, can you tell? And and I love the fact that that your both of your dads were very interested in what was going on, concerned, and clearly were to some degree at least invested. So. So with with that in mind, so clearly I already know that there's some involvement there. But what is what is their their thought and their investment in you uh, succeeding at Rocket League? Um, they're just very supportive with it. You know, they're the ones that 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 kind of pushed me to to take the time to try and and get better this year. Okay. Uh, yeah, they they played a big part in in supporting it. Yeah. And do they watch? So they, they're very invested. And they watch your watch all the streams where you're playing. They try to, yeah. And how much and how much do they understand about the game and what's going on, other than that? I go, mean, they, they know to look for Darth. Do they know more than that? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they are they are learning, so they they're understanding more all the time. Okay, that's what what you can expect. Oh, well, that's very cool. And and do you have siblings? I like brothers, sisters. No. Oh man! So you 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 represent all their hopes and dreams. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Okay, brilliant. All right, cool, Darth. So I guess my last question is: Is mm -hmm. there a question you think I should have asked you and I didn't? I mean, I guess the obvious question is probably something Rocket League based, but you know, I'm <laughs> it's it's cool. I don't really you know probably not going to give the best answers for Rocket League based <laughs> questions. You shouldn't be taking advice from a C2 Darth like you did back in 2018. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, I, 
Listen, I, I was bad enough that I can't even objectively say if it helped me or not. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have, because I, mean, I was quite the, the ball chaser back then. Yeah, All mechanics, right. no brain. Um, and I'm actually not even going to ask you the rule one question. I, I ask it of everybody, but I think I'm done with that now. I, I think I'm satisfied with the answer and where it stands, so we, we won't even It's bother. a no anyways. <laughs> Good. Unless it benefits me, it's a no. Very good. Good to hear. Good man. <laughs> All right, cool, Darth. So seven weeks from now, 5th of May is regional or the split three regional number one. And, yeah. oh, okay, well, here's a question. He has, he has actually a question. Do you feel, um, is there, do you feel pressure yourself to keep winning? Because there's an expectation that Orlando Pirates is always going to win. They're going to keep winning. They're does that does that play on your mind that there's some kind of pressure to keep winning? I mean, there's obviously a pressure. I felt it as soon as I joined uh, Pirates. Mm. Like, it's not only that you're expected to win; it's everyone is rooting actively against you, and that's something to get used to. But uh, it helps at the end of the day, actually. You know, it fuels you. So, so you've adjusted to that. The, I mean, that mm. that is that is the nature of being at the top. Is you have an active you have an active army of people that would like to see you fall. I, that's exactly anybody yeah. who makes it to the top that happens. Have, have you sort of made your peace with that? Yeah. No, I just try to you know prove them wrong. Try to try to get them more angry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the the pressure of playing on stream when when you are on stream is there more pressure than when it's just just a sort of private match. <sighs> I mean, sure, there is a bit more pressure, but I'm I'm not really phased by that anymore. I've played on stream quite a few times now, okay. so I'm but, good with that. All right, so you've made that adjustment. All right, good. Well, I think I think that'll be it. Darth, thank you very much. I appreciate right. you taking time, and good luck in seven weeks' time. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for the good luck wishes. <laughs> good man. I hope to see you casting. Me too. <laughs>